Okay. We're going to discuss another topic, uh, an IELTS test, travel and transport. Okay, so you're going to learn some idioms, some vocabulary, some rules about the speaking, number part one, two, three, and you will respond some questions. Okay? Yeah. Ready? Yes. <clears throat> Great. Very good. Well, okay, tell me. Uh, do you like traveling? Could you repeat again? Do you like traveling? Mm, most absolutely, yes. I think everyone will say yes because you know, traveling can make me like reduce all of the stressor in my daily life, and it's also a way to recharge my battery to back to school. Um, in a new, uh, like in a in a new, in a new avatar, and that's mean that I can learn better and I can do anything better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, when was the last time that you went on a trip or a journey? In the last, uh, in the last summer, yes, um, a few months ago, I go. Oh, well, what, what is the question, Dija? Okay, so when was the last time that you went on a trip or a journey? Um, the, yes, a few months ago, and I went on I like I went to Dalai and Nha Trang Beach. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how was that? I think it was, uh, no, they were um, a great time. They were a great vacation. Mm, as I have learned for a long period of time, and it's made me so, like, so proud. Mm -hmm. So when I go. I so when I went on traveling, it make me feel more comfortable and more confident to pack again my school and start an, a new semester. Yeah, start new. Okay, start another weather word. Commence. So why not? Commence is better than start. So, of course, you need to learn some advanced vocabulary. Okay, so instead of uh, start, we use commence. So, it's better to use this word. Okay. So, start, commence, and. Okay, what is my M? Okay, two double M. Okay, so. Okay. And, well, great, very good. And tell me, how do you like. How do you like to travel? Travel by yeah, yeah. bus, train, plane? I think that um, from my personal perspective, I think I will choose travel on foot because I, I haven't tried tra like try travel to any like to anywhere on foot mm -hmm. yet. So Maybe it's a new experience for me to try, and it's also helped me to uh, stay in, like stay in shape because I really want to make me be uh, like make me be a healthy person. So I think it's a suitable way for me. Okay, so you it makes you feel healthy, you say. Healthy or happy? He healthy. Healthy. Okay, so person, okay, is not essential, so we don't need to use. Well, first of all, let's uh, talk about the word travel. As you know, you can use it as a verb or as a noun. But if you want to use it as a noun, you need to know that is uncountable. Uncountable noun and you can't, you're not allowed to use the verb go on with travel. So we don't go on travel, okay? Just with travel. 
but you can say, for example, I hate air travel. I hate, for example, I hate air travel. So here, travel is a noun, but I like traveling. OK, now you can say that travel can be verb or noun. Well, now oh, let's yeah. learn. Yeah, can I have a question is like why travel be um, un uncountable now? I think it is. Yeah accountable now because we can like we we can count one one travel or two travel we can't count you know because if you want to if you want to use some countable nouns there are some other alternatives so we have countable and countable travel is uncountable because you can't count it but about countables you can use trip you can use tour. You can use journey. Yeah, and uh, what is the definition of travel in as a noun, teacher? OK, it's something like travel, like something journey or trip. So it there are synonyms. But and so that we can count it. We can, no, we can't. You know, let me say something. Um, actually, we have some, as you know, we have some countable and countable nouns, and there is no rule about the reason that why they are countable or uncountable. We only say that, for example, trowel can be used as a noun or verb. If you want to use it as a noun, okay, you can't, you can't combine it, okay, with go on. So let me say something. The words, the nouns, and the synonyms of trouble, okay, that can be combined with verb go on are countable. So we go on a trip. We go on a tour. We go on a journey. OK, we go on and actually outing. So outing, journey, tour and trip. We verb can actually can, can, can be combined with verb go on. So they are countable, but we never say go on travel. If you want to use travel, you can use it as a verb. So this is uncountable now, OK? But yeah. this is the synonym of journey. Get it? Yes, but well, no. uh, I, I still have a question. This year. Of course, you can ask. It's like, um, can you give me the example when when we will use travel as a verb? But uh, it's course. like. I traveled to I know, as, as a noun. And we have here, I hate air travel. So but, this um, can is it ha does it have any example like I go on a trip? Uh, what? Of course, let me say you. OK, let me tell you. Let me say some example. Let me give you some examples with these words. Trip, tour, journey, outing. OK, just pay attention. I give you some examples in order to explain the meaning of them. OK, because there are some differences in their meaning. OK, well, the first one, for example, when uh, you say, yeah. yeah. It's like um, I I think that I like I clearly would the trip to and journey, but I want to ask like, um, does the word travel have ex uh, any example like, uh, I go on, no. No, we don't go on travel. But is there any phrase of verb that go with the travel as a noun? OK, so because as I told you, for example, if you want to you want to use a word with travel, but we don't because travel can be a verb. So we can use it as a verb, so we don't need to put another verb. OK, for example, uh, it was a good travel. You can say it was really nice travel. It was really enjoying travel. It's good. You know, you can use 
But if you want to use a verb like go on, OK, it means start or something like this. You don't need OK. And for example, you can say we commenced our trowel. We commence our trowel. We started our trowel. So you can say something like this. Now trowel is noun, OK? Yeah. But if you want to use it at trip or tour or journey or outing, you don't need to put go on. So you don't need any other word because we have trowel as a verb. But about trip and tour and journey and outing, they're not verbs, OK? Yes. And Get it? Yes. And we can say like commence a travel. We can say commence is a start. So we, I can say, for example, we commenced our travel. And okay. but travel as a noun, we can we can't count it. So why we use a commence an a travel? Okay, so let me say this is an example. For example, you want to say we started for example we started our journey last week okay now you say okay teacher may i use travel i say yes we started our travel last week now start is the synonym of commence so I said we commenced our trowel last week, yeah. but it's better not to use trowel as a noun here. It's better to use journey, trip, or something like this. Okay, get it? Yeah. Okay. Now, now of course. Well, okay. Any? Okay. Now, did you get it? Do you have any other question about it? No, Was no, it clear? Very clear. Yes. Okay, that's great. Well, now let's talk about. Of course, as you know, we have the verb take because we take trip. We take a tour, we take a journey, and we can also use the verb go on, okay? We go on, so we take or we go on, verb go plus preposition on. So we go on a trip, we go on a trip. It's something like holiday. For example, we say we went on a trip. It means something like holiday, you can say. Or you can say we go on a tour, OK? Yeah. It means you visit, OK? You visit in and around a place, a city, a town or something, museum or somewhere. So it means take a tour or go on a tour means visit in or around a place, OK? And yeah. we have journey, of course, you know, it's something like traveling. OK, you know, something we normally use it as, you know, uh, an only maybe only trolling, something like, for example, I traveled alone solely. So it's something like journey. OK, and normally we can use, for example, I, I don't know, I went on a journey by train by bus okay so i started from a point start point to the destination this is my journey as any uh, and as you know journey is longer than trip trip is normally shorter okay and the last one outing okay you go on an outing it means very short trip very short trip maybe half a day half oh. a day yeah, yeah, I went, for example, I went on an outing. It means a short time, very short time, maybe a half a day. I don't know to visit some places in town. OK, get it? Yeah. And okay. and the journey, do we need to say that um, we start a journey from here and to here? No, if you want, you can say why not? Of course, you can say, for example, I, I commenced, I started my journey from, for example, Japan. OK, to I don't know, for example, to the US. OK, so you can say it's your choice, no matter. This is only an example. OK. Yes. OK, well, so. Uh, let's talk about actually uh, 
another word that is holiday. We normally use it. Holiday. holiday. OK, so what verb? What verb can we use with holiday? You think? Go on a holiday. Very good to go on a holiday and. Um. Go on and I think that's a. Uh, have a holiday. Of course, there are some collocations. There are some collocations. Yes. Which holiday? OK, the first one to take a holiday. To take a holiday. And to book. Holiday. As you said, to go on a holiday. Okay, so you can say to go on, to book, and to take a holiday. So you can use all them. Okay? Yes. Now, sometimes you want to talk about, for example, tourists. OK, we go sightseeing. Yeah, we go sightseeing. It's about in you know, a tourism or. We go, for example, or we see the sites. So. To see the sites. OK, another one or taken to take in the sides or to soak up to soak up the sides so first of all to go to go sightseeing is the first one that is really common when we normally use, OK? But we have the all the actually collocations with sight that you can use, OK? So you can say take in, OK? To take in, OK, sight. Or you can say to soak up, to soak. Have you ever heard them? No. OK, OK, so and they have a question. Yeah, taking is like um, if we or like w w what is the definite definite nice? Uh, what, what is the definition of the phrase of verb taking with? Like, yeah. Wait. Taking just taking just taking. OK, so you want to know the meaning of taking? Yeah. OK, so phrasal verb take in has different meanings, but when you are talking about a site, a movie, OK, or something like this, for example, say take in a movie, take in the site. It means to go to see. I go to see the sites to take in the sites. OK, so this one actually this means to, to go to see a place, to take in a place, OK? Or sometimes you can use it with movies. For example, I take in, I take in this movie. I will take in this movie. It means I will go to see this movie tomorrow, OK? So I will take in this movie tomorrow, so you can say. But if you want to know the meaning of phrasal verb take in without, without sight or without movie, just take in, means understand understand yeah of course taken of course means understand it means for example yeah i took it it means i got it i understood okay i memorized it but pay attention when we use it with something a place or a movie it has different meaning to go to see and another one that i think you want to uh, actually ask me okay to soak up the sides. What does it mean? It means 
to enjoy a place by watching. You know, I soak up the sides. It means I enjoy watching the sides. OK, to soak yeah. up the sides and. Any questions? No, yes, I think okay. it's very clearly. Very good, very good. Well, uh, OK, if you don't need this part, uh, I'm going to clean the board. Do you need them? Or let me do something. <laughs> I don't have. Oh, I don't have enough room to type. So let me do something. OK, let me clean the board. So, OK, this is about the first part. So let me clean the board now. Well, OK. Now let's learn an EDM. OK, some idioms uh, or something like some phrases, but let me ask you a question then. OK. Well. As you told me, OK, so do you like do you like traveling by train or plane or actually public transport? So tell me, do you like traveling by public transport or by private transport, something like car or your yes. car. I I think uh, um, for me, um, traveling by private transport, I think is a, a it is a very com comfortable way for me and my family because if you go on a public transport, you will like. Sometimes you will need to wait for some people that go like get on the car, uh, get on this transport with you. And I think that it's not very convenient for you and your family to have a, like a time together. And mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, yeah, and when you go on a private transport, you uh, you can have a private time. Mm -hmm. Your own time, of course, your personal time, of course. Very good. OK, uh, tell me, do you like, you know, I would ask you if you are adventurer or no. So do you like getting off? Do you like getting off? The beaten track. So let me write here this one to get off the beaten track. This is something that, okay, that you need to learn. Okay. So to get off the beaten track, what does it mean? To go to less visited, less visited places. For example, the places that you know, the places that normally few tourists go, you know. So maybe yeah. some remote places, some places that people normally, you know, I don't know, they prefer to go or they don't go because they're really remote. So, do you like getting off the beaten track? Uh... Let me think for us for a while. Of course, uh, of course. Uh, certainly, I'm not, be because when when I, I when I would like to go on a vacation. I think that I will choose the place that is a hot trend of that's mean that it has a lot of tourists visited and it is very famous and so I I, I think that when you come to the place like this and maybe it's uh, Well, um, well, 
there is a word I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. What are you thinking about? I don't know. Okay. Just so. Uh, so you're not an adventurer. So you are, or you're not an adventurer. So of course you'd rather get off the beaten track, or you'd not rather. So it's your choice. And tell me. Uh, imagine you take a tour. Okay. To I don't know visit some places. Okay, and tell me, would you actually rather get away from the crowd? You know, I don't know, for a few hours. So, what do you think? You know, having some time for yourself and. I think it's not my cup of tea. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, and. I uh, mm, I'm I mean like it's not worth to going on. Oh uh, no, it's not worth going on some place that have very little uh, tourists come to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, well, uh, OK, so uh, when visiting, when visiting a new city, when visiting a new city, do you love to get off the beaten track and discover the real local culture? I think that <clears throat> actually I would like to do it you know, one one time in my life, but I haven't tried it yet. So I think in the future I will like, get off the pit and track of um of a city like um, some city in you in the USA or the UK like the like the big one the most famous one like New York or London and I will get out the pit and track uh, <clears throat> of the of this city and I will like uh, try all of the local food and I will like st study the culture there. Of course, very good. So just, you know, let me uh, say something about to get off. You know, to get off the beaten track, you don't need to uh, use off of the stool. Just to get off the beaten track, you know, that's it. And try, you know, instead of local food, I'd rather local cuisine. So it's better, I think. Local cuisine is better. Cuisine. Cuisine, of course, cuisine, let me write here for you. It means cuisine. Yeah, it's something like food. Okay, actually, a particular type of cooking related to some, you know, some locals or actually different uh, types and parts of the world. So, well. But, teacher, okay. we, we, yeah. we, how we read it, this word is cuisine or cuisine no it's not key it's not cuisine let me let me write actually the pronunciation so maybe cu okay this is cuisine okay this is something like it's cuisine of course it's not ke cuisine cuisine of course and this is uncountable and we straight the first uh, the first the first one it's like um we we stress this work in the first button right 
Uh, if you want to know, if you want to know the stress, no, the second part. The second part is stress part. Cuisine. 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 Uh, yeah, of course. Zine. Of course. Cuisine. So the second syllable is a stress. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. Let's keep going. Well. Uh, teacher. Well, could yeah. You, could you give me some phrase of verb with true? True. With, with true. True. Through. Through away. You want to see we mean something like through. Okay. Some yeah. phrasal verb. Okay, of course I can give you, but you know, it should be related to this part. So let me complete this part and then of course I will give you some other alternative because it's not related. This actually yeah. has different meaning. But of course, so just let me uh, note it. Just I can forget it. Okay, so some phrasal verbs are true. Well, okay. Uh, one, okay. When you travel somewhere, okay, and you're gonna stay for maybe a few days, few weeks, maybe or a month, okay, more or less. Okay, where where do you prefer to stay? Hotel, hostel, youth hostel, resort. Where do you? I think this is. Depend on the um, time I spend. Uh, the the time. Like it depend on the the time I use on my vacation. It's like <clears throat> if I have a short term vacation, just about three or four days. I think I would like to choose to stay in a hotel. But if longer than a week, I think I will choose. To live in um, a motel, and among I think I will still live in a motel. Yes. Mm, motel. Okay, you mean okay. So I got it. Well, so let's learn some accommodations. Okay. The first one that you know, of course, is hotel. You know this one. Okay, let me write here. The first one is hotel. That you know this, of course. The second one is hostel. OK, so you know, uh, so it's something like dorm. OK, not hotel. OK, it's something like, of course, cheaper than hotels. And it's something like, you know, some shared rooms that you need to share your room with uh, different people. Of course, it's a little informal. So this is hostel. And we have another kind of hostel that is youth. Youth hostel. So it's different. Oh, oh, let me. Okay, let me put this here. Okay, it's better now. Well, so we have youth hostel. Actually, it's a kind of hostel for young people. Uh, so especially, you know, especially in the UK, we have something of this, you know, some of these youth hostels in the UK and. We have another one that is resort. OK, and what is this? Actually, uh, it's a kind of hotel. OK, hotel with facilities, drink, food, everything. So it's really good to stay. So yeah. resort, yeah, of course, it's hotel with facilities. That's something like, you know, often drink and food meals. OK. And we have camping sites. Do you know, Dominic? Do you have any idea about the definition of this? Yes, yes, I have. Campsite. Or we say campsite. You may hear campsite. Let me write here. So, do you know? Yes. Would you say? The the the, the different no different what is I I forgot it again definition yes the definition, definition uh, I think it's like uh, uh the area that you will set up your 
your like your um, land. Okay, tent, tent. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and you can say, of course, you can say a field. So this is really good. A field. You said set up. Instead of set up, you can say for tent. You say to pitch your tent. So to pitch your tent. Okay, so you can say. Yes. yes. Well, okay. Okay. Well, let's keep going with the and we have uh, another type of accommodation. Yeah, B and B. Yeah. This one. Do you know this? B B B and B. No. You know, it's somewhere like hostel. It's not hostel. It's somewhere like hostel. It's really small, and actually, you know, it gives bed and sometimes breakfast so just bed and breakfast so you don't you don't have your own room you need to share something like hostel but you know you may have breakfast it's really cheap and of course you can have a self catering a self catering flat so you can guess the meaning of course it means a private flat of course that you need to rent Okay, with a kitchen that you can cook. So it's a flat you rent with a kitchen that you can cook. Okay, so yeah. which one? Which one do you prefer? Tell me. I think that's maybe a campsite because the campsite I haven't tried yet. And mm -hmm. yeah, maybe the campsite. And? Okay campsite of course it depends you know if you want to stay for a long time i think campsite is not a really good idea but of course yeah. you know maybe for a short trip journey of course why not it can be really 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 enjoying okay well okay uh so let's keep going okay i'm gonna ask you another question okay but this is about the speaking part three, maybe the most important section of a speaking, speaking part three. Okay, so let's talk about it. How to answer, that is really important. For example, sometimes you don't know how to answer speaking, the questions of speaking part three. Uh, speaking part one is easy because actually, you know, some, uh, you know, question is, uh, some questions are asked about you your family something general okay so and you don't need to you know i don't know make an introduction or something like this you only answer and try to of course paraphrase the question try to uh use some synonyms maybe and expand your answer so it's really easy the second part that is actually a cue card is given to you and you can read it of course you can think of it you can discuss that's really good but the third part that is the most challenging section in IELTS is a little different now. How you answer. Well, so how to make your answer? OK, actually, uh, you can make your response using some of actually combinations to structure, you know, your answer. For example, one opinion and two examples. First, you give your opinion because actually speaking part three is normally ask about, you know, ask for your opinion, you know, in order to ask for your opinion. So you can express your opinion and don't forget about giving example. Uh, for example, so this is the first structure. Now, the second structure, again, you give opinion, okay, and reason. So, if this is your opinion, what the reason is? Why do you think like this? Okay, so this is the second structure. <laughs> this should be one. <laughs> okay, this is another one. Now, the last one that I think is the most 
complete and the best one opinion reason So they are some structures that you can follow in order to make your answer for part three. OK, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a question then. And when you want to, uh, for example, when you want to give your opinion, of course, say I would say I think in my opinion, so you can see all of them. When you want to actually give example or reason, you can see I mean OK, you want to give more explanation, so uh, and give example. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Just sure. think of it. Yeah, can, yes. Can we like. Um, can you give me an another? Uh, like. I mean, this like. I mean, I, you know, this is only actually I'm trying to give you some alternatives. For example, for opinion. There are lots of phrases that you can use, but I say, OK, I say is really good. I like it. OK, this is my choice. But or. I, yeah, it is some some kind of phrase that we can use this is can can help me to get a better score. Of course, you know, yeah, of course, let me say something. Uh, a speaking section, of course, and definitely you need to use some more than phrasal verbs. Of course, you need phrasal verbs, but idioms and collocations, you know, these two. If you want to increase your score, you need to know idioms. You need to use collocations. OK, so the most significant. And of and, course, uh, and. What like? I say and I mean what we call okay. this one. OK, this is I. OK, th this is not phrasal verb. Ah, this is a okay. normal phrase. This is a normal phrase. Phrasal verb like, for example, taking take a verb and a preposition. But ah, okay. here there is no preposition. I would say, OK, I would say and for example, you say I mean, for example, I don't know, people from my country normally travel to China. OK, I mean, now I want to give an example, so I use this. They are not phrasal verbs. OK, and how what what we call is we call a they, they are phrase. They're, yeah, of course, they're phrases. They're statements, they're phrases, of course. But statement. Yeah, of course, statement or phrase, phrase, you can say phrase. And is there any statement uh, better than I mean and I'd say? Uh, of course, there are lots of, you know, not better. OK, not better, but you can use lots of things. For example, for instance, for example, for more explanation, OK, so you can you can say lots of things, OK? I mean is one of them that I'd rather, OK? Yes. OK, so. Uh, or let me say something. Yeah, so for example, oh, this one, another one. So for example, OK, so you can say something like this. I think because OK, or so for example, I mean, I would say to my mind. To my mind for giving your opinion, of course, and since. For giving reason, you know, if you want to give reason, you say since OK, and you can say lots of things. So let me think, of course, and ha, huh, for example, instead of for example, you can say on the opposite side or on the positive side you can say both of them on the positive side is really good yeah on the positive side and you can make your for example uh on the positive side for example tourism uh can increase sales in local restaurants so you can say this you are giving an example so lots of phrases they are Good ones. And okay. teacher, 
and yeah. like yes, mm, this part is very clear now. But uh, I want to ask something else. It's like awesome. um, the word actually and absolutely does some some kind of this verb how we call it. Okay, you want to say that uh, something like actually or le first of all let me say something about actually i'd rather um literally this one is better so if you want to use actually yeah okay so it's better to use uh this one literally and they are adverbs actually is adverb literally is adverb honestly is adverb so you can use them and how about to be honest this is honestly there are synonyms but uh to be honest how can we call this how can you like how can we call some something like some like to be honest and what we call the type of this phrase you want to you, you mean that okay is it adverb or adjective or something it's kind of adverb to be honest you can use it as an adverb yes okay of course and no i think it's clear now very good okay well keep going okay so uh okay yeah of course you can use and it's not to be honest you can say of being honest so you can use all them it's a kind of you know actually because actually everything that describe everything every word that describes a word is adverb so it can be a phrase it can be a word with ly, a word with ly, or, or the other word. Okay, so to be honest, honestly, or for example, being honest, of being honest, or something like this, all of them are adverbs. Okay. Yeah. Well, keep going. So, my question What are, just think of it, you have one minute to think of it and make your answer. What are the benefits and drawbacks of traveling? Yes, okay, teacher. Okay, let's get started. For me, I will say about the advantage. First, um, for me, uh, the, pe the, the benefits of traveling is, as I told before, maybe it's, it can be a way to help you to reduce all the stress in your daily life and it's a way to reach recharge your energy your battery after a long a long period of hardworking time or hardworking studying and you can also start uh, like you can also commence a like a better day after having a uh, travel mm, 
moving on to the disadvantage about traveling. Uh, from my personal per perspective, I think uh, just im just imagine that when you go on some very famous landscapes and at the time that you go on it, there are a lot of people um, would like to visit to it too. So you will waste a lot of your time to chuckle, uh, to stand in life and wait until your turn to visit this landscape. So maybe it's a very bad disadvantage for me. Okay, to me, for me, uh, to me. Okay, of course you need to. Um, it's better to use to me, to me. And when you say I would say, you don't need to use. You know, for me, I would say to me, or I would say or to me, to me, or I would say. So you can say, uh, one of them, not both of them. And pros and cons. Okay, use it again. As I told you, paraphrasing the question is really important. So we say again, you repeated my question. You said advantage. I don't want to hear this because I said this word. You need to give me another synonym. OK, you say pros and cons, benefits and advantages yeah. and disadvantages, pros yeah. and cons. So you can say you can say benefits. OK, so but, of course, this is up. Yeah. Uh, what is the meaning of pros and cons? Pros and cons, as I told you, means advantages and disadvantages. And yeah, OK. Yeah, yes. of course. Pros and cons. Yeah, pros and cons means advantages and, and disadvantages. Uh, yes, and during the um, like during my speak in part three, I I don't allow to repeat the word that you give me before. During. You are not. No, it's not something that you are not allowed. No, you can. But let me say something. Actually, when it comes to get higher score, we need to do some things. We need to use synonyms. We need to paraphrase. OK, so if I say again, if I say advantage, it means I am a basic speaker, you know, because I don't know any other word for advantage. So I say, OK, let me repeat it again. So but, it's better. Uh, yeah. I mean, like at the first time I will change it into the benefit and in the next sentence, can I use again the, the verb? Uh, the, the word advantage? Of course, again, you can use. So first, just I want to say something. For example, you say, OK, once I can use it, I can use the synonym. Then again, I can say benefit. Of course you can because oh. you you sh actually because you could show your ability. Now it's OK. Use the advantage again. Use benefit again. It's OK. But at first, try to paraphrase. This is the first step that you need to know yeah. to do. That is really important. Then do anything you want. OK? Yes, OK. Good, very good. Well, let's keep going. OK. And uh, the next question that I'm going to ask you. OK. Teacher, can I ask yeah. uh, um, about the structure of battery? It's like first I need to give the opinion and then the reason. And yes, first opinion, then reason or first opinion, then example, or first opinion, then reason, then example. And I'm so one of these structures. Yes, OK. OK, well, now let's learn some EDMs about travel. That is really important. So let's complete this part and then we keep going with your actually question about through phrasal verbs. So let me uh, complete this part. OK, well, some idioms about travel. OK, the first idiom. Travel light. Travel light. It means. It means. 
travel with few small items. Okay, for example, I only actually take a small backpack when I go on holiday. I yeah. love to travel light. I love to travel light. Okay, there is my R here. I hate typing. Okay, well, so the second one to get up. At the crack of down. At the crack. Of down. Okay, what does it mean? You know, to get up very early. Yeah. So, of course, for example, we have a tour of the city tomorrow. So, we have to get up at the crack of down. It means to get up very early. Okay? Yeah. And the next one. Make way back. Make your way back to return to your okay starting point. Okay, to make your way back. For example, when the tour finishes, you can make your way back to the hotel. I can make my way back to the hotel. Okay? Yeah. And the last one to have itchy feet. This is really good. I like it. This is my favorite. To have itchy feet. Do you know? Please. Love traveling. Love traveling to have itchy feet. Yes. Okay. For example, I have itchy feet, so I try to travel. Okay. Twice or three times a year. Okay. Yes. Well, now it's your turn. You need to use four statements, four sentences using these idioms. Let's get started. Uh, hmm. The first, the first sentence I think is. Uh, Uh, teacher, can I have a question? Of course. It's like, um, can we, um, can we put the, like the, I mean like the correct form of the word in the, in an idiom. It's mean like, um, of, course. of course you need to. That's really important. And so when when I when I use a travel line in the past and it need to put it on travel. Of course, for example, of course, I got up at the crack, you know, because you're talking about past. Of course, you can change the tense. Uh, one of the one one type of travel I would like is traveling light because it's um, no, no, one type of travels I would like to yeah. one type of travel 
Oh, my favorite type of travel is traveling light as it is very comfortable for me to bring just a little item. Right. And? And a second. Get up a clear dog. I when I go on a um, when I go on a vacation, I hate getting up at the crack of dawn, and I would like to relax. Very good. That was really good. I hate getting up at the crack of dawn. That's great. And the next one. at the end of any at, at the end of any vacation i always would like to make my way back very good very good and for example i'd like to make your way my way back to home so it's good you know i really like to go back to home so and to have itchy feet I have, I am a person who have, who, who, who have itchy feet. Mm -hmm. Of course, who has, I'm a person who I, has itchy. Of yeah. course, very good. Wow. I not this idiom. Mm -hmm. And what, 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 did you say something? I couldn't hear you. It's like, um, can I have time to take note of them? Mm hmm. You can use all of them. I mean, they're really useful idioms you know, that you can use, of course. And idioms, as I told you, can rocket your score. They're really useful. Okay, well, any questions about this, right? Um, can you explain me to me again about uh, To My Mind? Because I just saw um, To My Mind on the board, so I don't... Know what is mean? To my mind. Yes. Can in my can opinion. You... In my opinion. Oh, to my mind is. Of ah. course. Uh, in my opinion, in my idea, from my idea, of course. Yeah. Okay. So, and. No, any I other think... word? So, very clear. Very... Okay, that's great. Well, now it's turn to. Talk about your request. You ask me to actually give you some examples and some phrasal verbs. So let me give you some uh, phrasal verbs with true, as I remember. Yeah, you said with true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Of course. So of course there are uh, maybe there are more than these phrasal verbs, you know. But now I can remember some of them. So let me tell you some important. So the first phrasal verb with true, breakthrough. First one, breakthrough. Okay. Actually, you know, it has different meaning. Okay, but you know, when, for example, you break through something, okay, it means you manage to get past or through something that is in your way. So this is the first thing. Okay. For example, you can say, uh, after hours, uh, I don't know something after hours of fighting, okay, and they could they could break through and capture their capital, okay. So they could pass, okay, something that was in their way. So this is the, the first meaning of breakthrough, okay. 
Uh, Get it? Rental is buy something. Of course, of course. So it means to manage, to manage to get past or through something yeah. that is in your way. OK, for example, let me say something. We have breakthrough about sun. Yeah. When when sun, when sun breaks through, OK, you can see it when you could not see it before because there were clouds in the sky. You know, there were lots of clouds in the sky, so you couldn't see the sun. Now the sun breaks through. It means you can see the sun. Get it? So clouds, clouds are gone. Clouds are gone from the sky. You can see the sun. Get it? And what what is the meaning of the practical in this case, teacher? What is the meaning of? No, oh, but practical in in this case. Can you explain pector? again? Pector? No, practical. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. As I told you, as I, let me say again, let me say. If the sun, if the sun breaks through, you can see it, okay? When you couldn't see, when you couldn't see, because there were lots of clouds in the sky. So, sky was cloudy. I couldn't see the sun. Now, sun breaks through it means sun could pass get past okay clouds and now you can see get it yes okay so this is clear yes very clear now. very good okay well now the second one of course we have go through this is really common that we normally use it go through okay Actually, when you go through something, OK, of course, it's some, it can be about process or difficulties uh, sometimes about difficulties. We can use it for difficulties or unpleasant situation. For example, when you go through something, you experience you experience a difficult situation. OK. So, for example, for example, my friend, my friend went through a divorce. It means it was really difficult, a difficult process. So when you go through something, you experience a difficult or unpleasant situation. OK, or feeling sometimes. OK. Yes. Or, or you can use it about, for example, you can use it about process. For example, you can say uh, you experience a particular process. For example, um, candidates candidates must go through okay a process of selection. They need to experience this process. So it's about experiences. This experience can be a difficult experience, bad experience, or a process. Okay. So go through something means to experience a difficult or unpleasant situation or to experience a process. Get it? Yeah. If you need, uh, I can write now. You don't actually after class. Uh, I, I will I, write I, them in chat box. Do you want? I, no, I think it's uh, OK. I think it's OK. okay. I, That's great. That's great. Uh, yes, dear. Is the phrase verb go through half the same thing? Get over. Get over. It's yes. a little different. It's a little different. It's something like explore. It's something like examine. Go through. If I want to give a good synonym, it can be the synonym of examine or, for example, explore or search. Okay. So something like suffer, you know, suffer from something. You know, because you experience really bad thing you suffer from, okay? Experience or but uh, or sometime, you know, there are, it has different meanings, but you know, I think they are good synonyms. Yeah. Okay. So now another one, 
OK, that is good to learn. OK. Um, it's actually breeze through. That is good. Uh, just let me say something, you know, actually, uh, I was thinking about something that you said because I think you don't know the meaning of get over. Get over is definitely different, as you know. So let me say the meaning of this. Explain it. That is really. Actually, it's something like if I want to give you a synonym, it's something like recover from, you know, or come round. So, for example, when you become well again, you get over, you get over an illness. So it means you become better. OK, when you actually feel better after a very bad experience, you get over. OK, yeah. but this is actually about your feeling. You know, it's something different when you go through you pass. OK, something get it. Yes. Get. OK, well. OK, so let's keep going. Let me breeze. Breathe through. Breeze. OK, that is really good. To achieve something very easily. To achieve something very easily. It means a breeze through. It means to do something, to achieve something very quickly and easily. OK, yeah. for example, you can you breeze you breeze through your homework it means you could do it very easily and quickly okay yeah of course and if you want to use it if you want to use it for place so breathe through let me say something here something or somewhere so pay attention Yes. somewhere or something so if you want to talk about somewhere for example it means to move to move through a place quickly for example you could breathe through for example i don't know uh, customs in those days okay somewhere you could breathe through for example somewhere very quickly it means you could move through okay yes OK, good. So this is about. Uh, and another one, let me think. Huh. This one. Carry through. OK, carry through. It means something, you know, the synonym can be effect. Can be effect. OK, it means to complete or finish something successfully. OK. Of course, in spite of difficulties, for example, there are lots of difficulties, but I could carry through. It means I could make it. I could complete and finish it in spite of these difficulties. OK. Yeah, and this is separable, so you can use separate. For example, I could carry it through. You know, it means in spite of difficulties, problems, I could do something, finish something successfully. OK? Yes. OK. And of course, you can use it with uh, somebody. For example, I carry you. I carry you through something. So carry you. OK, or somebody, him, you, OK, through. What does it mean? When I carry you through something, it means I help you. I help you to manage, you know, yes. for example, to manage a difficult period. So I can help you to manage your difficult period. OK? Yeah. Yes. OK, and the last one, be through. That is, be through. OK, finish doing something. OK, I, for example, I'm not I'm not through just yet. It means I haven't finished it. OK, I am not or I'm through. OK, it means finish. Yeah, I know something like finish doing something. 
OK? Yes. OK, questions? I think no. Despite <laughs> Very good, of course. Well, uh, I think I told all of them. Well, ah, uh, huh, there is another one. Let me say the other one, the last one. OK, so burn through. Burn through. So what's the diff uh, what's the meaning of when we say actually burn through or sometimes you can you can use it the uh, past participle burnt through it means to use all something you know all of something quickly okay for example oh they burned through two million dollars they burned through two million dollars it means they used all this two million dollars quickly so burn something okay burn through get it uh yes and how about when we want to say like go oh uh, no it's like well when we say for example that's I say uh, I passed the bridge and how can we change it into the phrase we throw teacher like pass we... through you mean pass through the bridge yeah yeah yeah, yeah yes well, this is pass through it's it's really common it's pass through of course you can use it yeah you know okay. Okay. but you you need uh, you need to actually you need to uh, know something uh, pass through okay uh it's something like for example you over or you cross pass cross yeah. pass over or pass through something okay something like tunnel path yeah. pass through the tunnel okay and uh you normally use for actually something like close places something like tunnel you can use pass through okay yeah. Yes, and how about a put through teacher? Put through. Put through? Put, put, put through. Yeah, I got it, put through. Actually, it can have uh, different meanings. So if you use it, put something or somebody through, okay? It means, yeah. for example, I put you, okay? Uh, I put you through, for example, this situation or this person. It means, I connect you to someone else, okay, on the telephone. For example, I say, hello, who's speaking? Okay, I put you through, for example, uh, Mrs. Anderson. It means I connect you to this person. So you can use when you're making phone call, okay, put someone through someone else, okay? It means to connect, okay? Yes. And uh, sometimes you can say put somebody through, not to someone else, okay? Through school, university, okay? I say, for example, I put you through school. I put you through school. It means I pay, okay? I pay for you, okay? So you can go to school, I pay for you. So I put you through school or university or college. It means I pay, okay? Yes. And uh, we have to put uh, actually somebody through something. I put you through something. It means I make you do or experience something difficult. I put you through, for example, I don't know, through eight weeks. I put you through eight weeks of working. It means I make you do this, okay? Do something difficult. And the last one you can say to put something okay through. It means to do what is really essential. For example, uh, production. I can give you an example. Production will start up again when, for example, these changes have been put through. It yeah. means actually I do something essential to get actually plans to make some plans. OK, get it. So to put something through and. 
um, maybe the last question I think is carry through and uh, cool. may I ask you to actually answer your last question after class because I have another class yeah. after you and I have only one minute <laughs> so I'm so sorry I need to go yeah. and start another class so of course you can write it to me so that of course I have time to uh, answer after my class you know I have another class after yours then I will answer you okay yes okay teacher thank you so much okay and I'm so sorry because I need to start okay. another one okay so i'm so sorry thank you so much okay it was really good time talking with you again so have a really good week and see you next week have a nice day Goodbye. thank you thank you so much goodbye goodbye